boys and back again. Well, kind of back, and Millie for the first time, and Jerika. It's Jerika, right? Am I pronouncing Gernica. it properly? Jerika. <laughs> Jerika. 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 I can't Gernica. pronounce that. Yeah, whatever. It's okay. fine. Perrin's also a difficult one to pronounce. That's it. <laughs> Ladies. My name is hard to pronounce, too, for some people. Yes. Mine is the easy one. Um, Phoenix, out. It was out January 26 on Napalm Records. And with us again, Emily Johnson, Gerica Mancini uh, from the Gems, at least one, uh, two thirds of them, right? Uh, yeah. Great stuff. Great new album. From the Thunder Mother to the Ashes to the Phoenix has risen. Is that the good way to put it? Yeah, yeah. perfect. And I really like your space outfits. Those, that's a really cool image. I like that, that image that you have. Thank you. Very cool. That's uh, we're gonna continue that. We are we are we just tried on a, a new rendition of that outfit just yesterday. Okay, we're having like a next level version of that superhero oh. <laughs> thing coming up soon. <laughs> is that what it is? It's a superhero sort of a. I mean, we kind of have Kiss in mind, but yeah, something like that. Something I think epic it works. and something I think it that works. people don't usually wear everyday life. <laughs> it works. The name works. is cool too. I guess it worked out that you had a G and E and an M in the band because the name is really, really cool. Uh, does your bass player start with the letter S or is that, you know, we're just going to keep it to you three and then we can figure out the bass player later? I mean, it's definitely the three of us. Uh, I guess we put the S because we are many people, the you're, gems. You're poor <laughs> yeah, you're poor yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, uh, we'll see. Maybe. The, the one who will play, I mean, as of right now, we have uh, uh, live bass players, like hired guns, and we intend to keep it that way, but hopefully a more permanent bass player uh, live in the future. And maybe we'll get a nickname for that person that starts with an S. We'll see. <laughs> who okay. knows? Okay. Or, or, hey, you could just say, when we audition bass players, we will only audition bass players whose name starts with the letter S. I, I don't exactly. think you should do that, but, you know, maybe... <laughs> Or or if Thunder Mother loses their bass player, you know, you could always. I don't think that bass player would want to play with us. Play, she's playing guitar. <laughs> now. Well, the new one. Okay. But anyways, I won't say that. I won't say that. All right. So I see a lot of themes on this album. A lot of themes. And maybe you guys can speak to it. Uh, when I hear songs like, I'll just bring up the song list. Queens. Mm. You know, Send Me to the Wolves. Silver Tongue, Running, Kiss It Goodbye in Psycho. I mean, there. what is the, describe to us, <laughs> the, like I couldn't get it, <laughs> but there, there is definitely not one song. Like, it seems like half the album is, there's a theme there. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that we had to get off our chest. <laughs> and the whole album is us basically working through the grief. So... There's some angry songs, there's some frustration, there's a, you know, just pure sadness. And and in, in that mix, it's still empowering and hopeful. So, yeah, this is our people. If you listen to the album from beginning to end, you get to hear basically everything, all the emotions that we went through uh, when this happened to us. So, you know, yeah. ladies, I, I listened to the album last night for like the third or fourth time. And when I'm ever I'm listening to a new record, I, I like to write down a few words that that it evokes in me. And I wrote, you know, empowering was a word that you put. So I, I wrote down empowering, confidence, attitude, uh, positive. And then musically, I put groove and bluesy. So those are those are just words that came to mind when I listened to it last night. And, you know, good for you guys, because... You know, going through what you guys went through, you could take this very kind of whiny, woe is me kind of place, but I felt it was a very kind of strong record. So was writing this like therapy for you guys? Was it cathartic for you? Like just the, you know, because you could have kind of retreated, but it sounds like you just kind of like Jimmy said, with the song titles and the attitude. So was it a therapy session for you guys to write this record? I mean, for sure. Like it was almost like we used all these emotions as fuel uh, to put into this new project and to to write these songs. I mean, 
we 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 try to think of other themes but on the other hand we're just like you know this is what we feel right now and this is i mean that that's the best outcome t- with lyrics to a song you know when you actually write something real and it was really therapeutic to put down our feelings in words you know um so yeah i mean it is uh it's been helpful for us in many ways and also i think i mean this debut album is a lot of like a statement like this is us you can never we're not gonna give up basically uh we're gonna rise up again no matter what so yeah we really it was nice (laughs) and we had each other which was also really nice and helpful well it came across in the lyrics and it came across just in the vibe of the album like albums have a feeling and i really felt that in, in the album Nice. Yeah, my favorite song is Psycho. That's my favorite song. I just kind (laughs) of. What do you think about the video? I I like Psycho. I thought it was great. I (laughs) I think everything, I I think, (laughs) I think it's, there's this theme, definitely the theme. I remember last time you were on, you know, it was very emotional. Yeah. Didn't I cry? (laughs) Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Oh, God. But it's okay. But it's okay. It's, 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 it's all part of the process, right? Of recovering. I kind of, like what you did you didn't sit back and wait three years to record an album and keep everything inside you let it all out you rolled the momentum and that's so important and then you let the music do the talking do you have any regrets letting it all out not only with me but maybe with other some other podcasters Mm, no No. i don't regret anything i feel like we are on a truth journey that's this album where we're being honest and we're sick of like, you know, hiding what's actually going on because of, you know, other circumstances or other people or you're trying to, yeah, it's, I'm just sick of it, like completely over not being truthful. And we're all very truthful, honest people. Yep. And that's how I like, that's how I like. And we all, you know, that's how we are as humans. So it's nice to just be freely yourself and, unfiltered and it's just really nice and uh, I do maybe in hindsight I do regret crying on the pod because it was or I mean in last time we um, interviewed because I felt like maybe I should have taken maybe a month before I did interviews but then it was part of the process too and I'm a fighter and I'm kind of like you know in a sense I, I, I just want to I want to I just want to yeah. say something right what you're saying just so you know, after that show, I got text saying, man, I feel like she did. Because somebody else who was an artist who actually wrote me after and said, I went through the same thing. And you connected with people actually because you cried. Or So you might look at it like, wow, you know, maybe I overexposed myself too early. But actually, you did a good thing. You made people feel that, hey, I've been in this situation too. How yeah. does that make you feel? I mean, that makes me very happy. And I kind of got shivers on my arms and stuff now because it, it that's the best feeling, you know, connecting with people on a real level. And that's kind of the response that we've received. That's why I don't regret anything because the truth needs to come out eventually. And if, if anyone would doubt us, we have all the receipts. I'm kind of like, we're, it's not <laughs> like we're saying anything weird. <laughs> well, and you know, you came across this- as human. You, you came across as human. And I think, you know, this is a new age in, in music. Like when we were all younger, we looked at our bands kind of like superheroes, right? And there wasn't this, there weren't podcasts, there wasn't social media, there wasn't this immediate, you know, you read the news three months later in a magazine. So I think people are looking for humanity in kind of the artists that they enjoy and feel like, okay, I enjoy her or his music, but I could also have a beer with them at a club and that would be cool too. I kind of feel like I know them. So I think showing your human side actually is endearing to people. And, you know, not that people need to choose a side, but I think at the end of the day, people tend to relate to yeah. others that they see as more human and not up on a pedestal. So, you know, in French, we say un mal pour un bien, something bad for something good. So I think mm-hmm. something maybe that you perceived as bad actually was, was quite good in terms of just making people see your humanity that yeah, artist cried by the way when you cried what that artist cried when you cried oh wow yeah. i mean i feel like we as musicians we should talk more honest about what we go through because we did have a we did have a clinic a few in november i think it was 
uh, we had a talk in front of like a lot of business, like um, music industry people. And after us, uh, you know, telling our story and how we rebuild our company, blah, 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 within a year and all that we accomplished, blah, blah, blah. After the, the thing, she came and told us how she's a booking agent and she had been through a very similar situation with a person that she'd worked with. I mean, she's not the artist, but I feel like our story is pretty relatable and that um, it's good that we talk about it. And a lot of like former Thunder Mother members have reached out as well because we're doing it not just for our own sake, but for them. And I think they appreciate the fact that we are speaking out. Yep. So, so it's a support group. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, it's a support group. And we're here and uh, like we would love to talk to more people that, you know, if we can help each other and have a more loving community of musicians, it would be great. So so I said I would ask one Thunder Mother question because I see you haven't been shying away from it in interviews recently. But no, <laughs> so you're going to be playing festivals. I assume at some point they're going to be playing some shows. You're eventually your paths are going to cross. So, you know, if you're in the compound backstage at Sweden Rock or Hellfest or whatever, and you run into each other. Is it, you know, hey, have a good show, have a good show? Is Do you see yourselves having kind of a relationship, a conversation, or it's just really at the point that, or today anyway, it's at the point where there wouldn't be any pleasantries. It would just be you're in your corner there and theirs, and that's it. It's just there is no conversation. I think we will definitely avoid each other. And mm -hmm. I, I mean... As Gernika mentioned, like we are honest people, and I could never wish her well. Unfortunately, because <laughs> I mean she has hurt me very much, so I yeah. can't. I'm sorry. I I can't. I couldn't say that to her. So I would probably just avoid her, and I think maybe all of us would. Yeah, wow. I hate those kind of confrontations. Like I would rather like hide in the bushes or something. Like I would. Ne I never want to see her. Like there's the a lot of fakeness. The at let's, there's what? a lot of fakeness at festivals. Let's be honest, right? A lot of people are fake to each other. At a yeah, festival. but I mean, I think to be completely honest, the the new lineup. I don't know two of the girls, so I have no hard feelings towards them whatsoever. So eventually, I'm kind of hoping to get to talk to them because we are trying to build a nice community of female musicians. You know, actually supporting each other and being there for each other. And like I've said in, in a lot of interviews, we're here when, you know, shit is going to hit the fan eventually. And we are here waiting for them with open arms and ready to be that support that you will need eventually. Um, but as far as the other two that I actually have been working with, my dream is to be able to just, you know, have like a, you know, when you do like a, when you're trying to protect yourself, like spiritually, like I'm going to have to do something like that, like see like golden light around me or something because i'm gonna have to be able like just ignore them Emily, i can't let that I, energy in my there like, like i talked to jerica last time but <laughs> you're the one who said you know what if she's gone i'm gone yeah right? that takes a <laughs> lot of guts i mean you guys are opening up for the scorpions you guys are playing arenas you're that's friendship and that's not only friendship but that's commitment and i mean yeah. Tell me about that. I mean, you're going, like, at what point did you say, I can't do this? I, I, I just want to hear your thoughts on that. I mean, I mean, we, we've had some tough years in that band. Like, I think what, I mean, uh, what helped me go through it all was because Guernica was in the band and we had, we always had each other when, you know, when things were tough, like we were always happy on stage and I l loved every show we played because that's the best you know but uh, you know all the those that other time you know around a tour and everything i was feeling shit most of the time and and Guernica was really helpful um you know to have a real friend with you on tour that you could always like text or whatever you know and i mean first of all like we were a band we were a democracy that's the way we worked in thunder mother and we split up the hard work and we did everything together so for somebody in the band to just all of a sudden starting to making own decisions, that wasn't for me at all, uh, first of all, you know. And also, like, I could never imagine myself being in that band without Guernica. And also, you know, it was kind of a the worst thing ever business-wise to fire the singer who had the voice that made our sound. You know, there was just, like, you know, so many 
stuff adding up. So yeah, I mean, I had no doubt. I just told her that like you, what you did, gonna... what you did is very rare. What you did. It is. It's very rare. Most bands would just say, you know what? I'm just going to shut my mouth and ride the great, you know, ride this. And I'm telling you what you did. And you could ask parent. Mm. You, what it's, you did was so commendable and so uh, it, it's a good thing. It, yeah. What you did is... is Emily I, is it, a person that sticks to her word because we always yeah. said to each other, like, no matter what, we have each other's backs. And if you quit, then I quit. Or if any, you know, like anything happens, like we didn't want to be in the band without each other because it was the only way we could stay sane. Yeah. 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 And I mean... Yeah, of course, it was like, I mean, I guess in that moment, I realized, you know, because we've been through so much, you know, like tough periods being on tour and, you know, just wanting to stay in your room and cry or whatever. But, you know, to go through all that for your career. And then, I mean, when all this happened, I just felt like, no, that's enough for me. I mean, it's not worth it. And it's not worth the career if I... If I don't have any respect, if my opinion isn't respected, then bye bye. Find yourself a new drummer, basically. That's very yeah. admirable. That's yeah. very admirable. Emily put her foot down first, too. Yeah. 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 It, it, it would have been easy just to stay on the Scorpions tour and do the date other dates, but you know, you know, sometimes the right decision isn't the easy decision, but it's no. the right decision for you. So, yeah. and again, we have a we have a great album that came from all these experiences so enough about that other band let's talk I, about i'm happy band. we're working through all of this yeah. psychologically yeah. i'm happy we're working through this i feel like we're coming you know to some sort of good place okay yeah. go ahead parent sorry so so let's talk about positive stuff so you Gernica, you mentioned before kind of just you know support group women in rock and you know one of the things i noticed like at the start of the year i always start a playlist best of the new year so best of 2024 and i noticed just yesterday, you know, we're early in the year, so there's only maybe 12, 15 things on my playlist, but I have the gems on my best of playlist. I have uh, a Canadian band that's fronted by a woman, Unleash the Archers, on my playlist. Uh, Julia Log, who's Richie Kotzen's wife and a great bass player, she put out some material and she's on my playlist. Uh, Plush, an American band, uh, is on my playlist. So all of a sudden I look at my top 12 or 15 of the year so far, and five of them are like female fronted bands. So what's happening for, is this like just all of a sudden a better climate for women in hard rock and metal? Uh, Nita Strauss, like just, just all kinds of stuff seems to be going on. So what are your thoughts on, on what you guys are bringing to the mix and just the opportunities for, for women in the hard rock, heavy metal world right now? Cause it seems like it's blossoming. That's such a hard question. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we kind of never, we just kept working and doing our thing. And I think that maybe, I mean, obviously there's more women out there that's just not going to let anything stop them and just go ahead and uh, try to, or work hard to accomplish their dreams. Uh, and cause that's kind of how we did it. We, we had to rebuild and regroup quickly because this is what we want to do. And we love playing music and finally we are happy playing music again. So it's like very exciting, everything. Um, and I mean, maybe the climate is better because I honestly, I don't have, it's very rare that at least online, because we haven't toured that much yet. Uh, I feel like people are very supportive and it's like, it's not so much gender as much as it is good music. Like, are you actually producing good songs and, uh, you know, good recordings and all these things? So that has not, not so much to do with the actual gender of the musicians. And maybe that's what people actually are enjoying now, just it's a good song. It's a good song. If it's made by a girl or a man or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah, it's very exciting to see that there's so many women do like killing it out there. I think that's very exciting. Cool. Maybe we're, we're going to get like a Lilith fair of metal. Maybe we're going to get like a, a an I hope all so. That would be a dream. I want to play that. I want all us right. to play there. All cool. right. You're, you're, let's talk about the favorite songs on the album. All right, Emily. What songs that really stick out for you and why? I mean, they always change like from week to week. But I mean, one that I, I liked from start very much is Force of Nature because, I mean, musically, it's crazy. And it's just like 
we had so much fun creating it and you know to to just be able to put in some weird fills where, wherever you want it and Mona is playing like a two harmony jazz guitar solo and you know it's it's still kind of catchy I think so that that one is definitely a favorite both to listen to and to play you know it's really it's a fun song Eureka, you. Oh, me? Um, I love all the songs. <laughs> no, no you can't love I, them all. I really, I, it's like children. I think you Ease Your Pain, what? The it's one? Like children, you could only love one or two. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I think Ease Your Pain is beautiful. And uh, again, it really, the story behind Ease Your Pain is basically Mona brought the idea to us um, of like how she she wished that she could like carry some of that pain from us because me and Emily were really going through it. Obviously I was crying here. <laughs> uh, so yeah. And it we is a ballad. Really so good. everybody knows it is a ballad. It is a ballad. Yeah. It's a power ballad. And it's about, it's, it's a love song to us, to a friend, basically wanting to, when you're feeling is like a little bit stronger and you want to carry some of that pain that they're feeling when they're going through a hard time. And I think that's so beautiful. Like, I mean, both Emily and Mona are amazing humans and friends and I think it's such a just beautiful thing that she wanted to do that for us and that then that we then wrote a song about it see so I didn't know that was a story well, what I about had you? To... sorry what about you well, my my top two were easier pain and I think it should be a, sig uh, a single and if Mona was here I would tell her the guitar work on on that song is just stellar just stellar you know it's it's so funny it's hard to kind of say what style you guys are which is great you're a rock band you know but you know i grew up in the 80s listening to acdc but also to like you know the hair metal from la and like you know a lot of those la guns and those kinds of bands had some great moments and great soloing if you liked 80s power ballads like easier pain is a song for you so i think easier pain should be a single and then on the opposite end i love send me to the wolves i just love the -na 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 -na, like the, the the blues and the soul that's in there so those are those are my two standouts, but I mean, it's a, like I said, I think, look, if people haven't heard the record yet, like just give, I, I know it's so hard these days, like people have short attention spans, give the record a good listen. I think it's, it's only about a 45 minute record, which is the right length. So many bands throw out like an hour and 10 minute record and it's like, oh, it's too much to digest. This is just the right amount to digest and uh, really, really good. So ease your pain, send me to the wolves are uh, my two favorites this week. Like maybe they'll be different next week. Oh, maybe. <laughs> All right, mine was a uh, psycho. I just like the punky attitude for that. You know, it's kind of like a, a football cheerleading song, and uh, like a phoenix. I just like that, like a feeling, some burner. You know, it's a real fast in your face kind of song. Mm. Uh, what else do you guys want to say about the album to tell your your the people out there? I mean, we we can we had it like the this order of the songs. We really put some effort in putting them in a specific order so that we would take like the listener on a on a journey uh, with all the interludes that's kind of in between and so i mean that's something i'm really proud of that we actually you know put everything together in a way i mean yeah we do have maybe some you know it's kind of like all over the place with influences you know from the 70s and the 80s rock but somehow it's a red line through the whole album because because of the theme that goes through like you're going through hard hard times and you still like rise up again and you never give up and you know all that stuff so i think that's that that was a new thing for us and we're really proud of that yeah i think it's empowering and i hope that like we i mean we know what inspired the songs for on our part but we really made an effort to to make them open enough for anyone to relate to them because i think every single person has a person that they don't want to meet like when they go out like you know like the psycho song it's not specifically about a psycho it's just i think most people have like an ex or a whatever friend that they just don't want to you know have uh, to gotcha. see when they go out <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do, you have, do you have a copy of the album do you have a copy of it in front of you i have it up there are you go grab it grab it grab it if you can wait it's all about showing the product. Let's take a look. Isn't that nice? It's cool to see, you know, your album come out like that. Look at that. It's beautiful. Yeah. And it's almost like very Kiss-like. We just need, if there were like 
men instead of women at your feet, like uh, you know, the, the, I mean, like, it is. Did, like did it hurt having the fire in your hand? Did it hurt? Like, I mean, yeah. When you had the fire, felt, like, how long did it burn your hand? Felt kind of cool though, so I stood through the pain, you know, because. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, but it is like hardly inspired by Kiss. Uh, we can admit that, and uh, I mean because we we wanted to have something powerful, like you know something with the three of us standing proud, and you know to really fit with the Phoenix thing that we kind of look like we have, you know, risen and uh, you know the we plastic on here, but you can kind of see the yeah, yeah, yeah. there's like a rip it open. Like the shadow. No, 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 no don't, 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 I know there's a lot of North American fans who are wondering and even maybe European fans also. So uh, I know there's not a lot of dates booked yet, but I think I saw a couple of festivals popping up. So are, are there touring plans? Are, are, are we going to be able to see you in different places in the world later in 2024 and maybe into 2025? I mean, that's the, the goal. Uh, after the pandemic, it's been really tough to book shows. There's like a different climate. You need to prove yourself in a completely different way. So in that aspect, we are truly, uh, you know, starting on square one. Uh, but we have um, a European tour uh, planned in October. Uh, okay. Oi, I should say fall. We are keeping it open. Oops. <laughs> Might be October. In the fall. Yeah. Well, well, uh, well. But anyways, it's like four weeks, five weeks in, uh, yeah. In the, the fall. fall. In the fall. In, in the uh, fall. But yeah, October. Uh, but anyways, and then 2025, we are kind of hoping to get uh, get over there to North America and do some dates over there. But yeah, it's a lot of planning and we need to set it up. But that's the goal at least. Yeah, and touring is tougher than ever these days, like you said. I mean, for for American North American bands to go to Europe, for European bands to come to North America, the cost of fuel and buses and just anything that you need is just so expensive these days. So hopefully, you know, there's bands that are figuring out the formula and, uh, you know, I guess bands and booking agents and management and clubs need to work together to make it happen. So, you know, hopefully we find the model that works. Yeah. Are you working on new music? Not yet. Well, you know, because you're, as you're waiting, right, to tour, I figured, you know, you'd probably start writing some new stuff. But I mean, we, we did talk, talk about, about it. it. Emily, go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but See, we, I knew we, it. I knew it. I we knew actually, it. I mean, the the dream would be actually to release something sooner than later. But I mean, we want to kind of enjoy that that Phoenix is out for you know a couple of more weeks or something. <laughs> but then, I mean, because we had like you know n not that much time to write Phoenix uh, because we really wanted to just get going mm -hmm. and we had no time to waste you know and we wanted to make use of the momentum and everything we kind of speed wrote those songs and um for next album i think we want to have some more time uh to do it like more in a more calm way so i think we will start this spring to just you know just write songs to just you know with no 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 expectations just to get get starting yeah. again yep yep I knew it. I knew it. Ladies, uh, the Phoenix is out. It's been out since uh, January 26. Pick it up, Napalm Records. I really like it. I think you're, the musicianship's great. The vocals are great as well. Everything sounds good. The production is solid. So I think you guys are in the heading to the right direction. Any closing remarks? I mean, follow Thank us you. on Spotify. <laughs> that that helps us a lot. And go. our YouTube. <laughs> So yes, and and what they say is that if you even if you click on Spotify, every time you click on Spotify, it goes higher up for everyone else to see those songs when they're searching. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. That's how it works. Yeah. So just look, great job, guys. I think they should be on tour of ACDC. ACDC just announced a European tour. There's no opening act yet. I think that. There you go. There you go. What, what are you guys waiting for? Right. Not, we not have an announcement. Time. I'm just kidding. You know. <laughs> In fall. <laughs> that would be a great mix right away. Like this. I mean, that would be such a dream come true. And it would be like the greatest karma 
situation ever but uh, let's see opening for acdc is still a dream for all of us <laughs> yeah, it would be a fit just that you guys are playing like just you know four on the floor rock and roll so the scorpions was a good fit but i think acdc is probably the ultimate fit so look i'm gonna i'm gonna wish we're just you throwing well. it out there we're just throwing yeah. it out there and hopefully somebody will pick it hey, up okay ask the universe and you never know what's gonna happen you never know so, uh, you never so know. <laughs> look, but i do hope we see you in north america because uh you know a lot of us who hadn't really heard Thunder Mother before yeah. when you opened for the Scorpions were won over. And, you know, I remember I, I saw the show, one of the first shows you did, I think the second show was here in Montreal. And then, you know, we started following you guys on social media, like you encourage people to do. Uh, so kind of now I'm invested, right? So so it was disappointing <laughs> to hear what happened, but I'm glad we've come. I, I, sh I should I should have worn my Thunder Mother shirt because it's a collector's edition now. There's like three members that are not there anymore. So... <laughs> <laughs> I think I showed it to you last time. I was wearing my Thunder Mother shirt. and It's a collector edition, right? It's cool. Yeah, I mean, sure. we are super proud of everything we accomplished. And you can never take away the hard work that we put in in Absolutely. building that brand and name. Yeah. So we just see it as something amazing that we've done, like in our CV or whatever. And now we're just looking for the future and excited to what's the next step and how much more can we accomplish now that we actually feel good and... And things are good. <laughs> all right. On that cool. note, thank you very much. Hope, wish you all the success. Congratulations on the album. And hopefully you'll have a great tour as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. That's, That's the great day. Thank you.